Seven years ago, in 2013, Naughty Dog released a game partnered with Sony Entertainment and released something that would go on to win hundreds of Game of the Year awards, which had controversial scenes and also the unfortunate death of a child. This game explored a world where the Cordyceps fungal infection was accidentally released to the public through South America with the import of coffee and cocoa, which is used to make chocolate. This infection would go on to ravage the world for the foreseeable future. This game was no other than The Last of Us. Now we have a new one, so let's explore that game in its full, but first a recap of what we had experienced for ourselves. Now there will be spoilers for both first and the second Last of Us, so please be warned. If you want to click off the video, please go ahead. Joel Miller, a father to Sarah Miller, in his late 20s was at home on his birthday to find his daughter asleep on the sofa in the front living room. To shortly after receive a present from her, which is a watch. They then have a fun chat about Sarah selling hardcore drugs to get the money for the watch and how Joel now wants her to start putting towards the mortgage. And Sarah goes back to sleep out of boredom. I mean, it's Joel who doesn't want to go to sleep. And not long after, she's awoken by her Uncle Tommy needing to speak to her dad. The line cuts out, she goes downstairs to find Joel, only to see him run for a door and pick up a revolver when they are attacked by a runner. This is the first stage of the Cordyceps fungal infection. The runner is killed. Tommy turns up, they get in the car, everything's happy. No, of course not. They get in a car crash, Sarah breaks a leg and they make a run for it only to be chased down by infected getting to the highway. A soldier saves them, trying to open fire upon Joel and Sarah shortly after. Unfortunately, this is when Sarah is hit by a round, the soldier is killed by Tommy and Joel then has to sit there with the dying Sarah in his arms who unfortunately passes away right in front of him. Now, this has got to be any parent's worst nightmare. Having your child not only die, but having it die in your arms. And this is the reality of what happens when an infection like this actually comes into play. Now then, 20 years later, it's 2033, and Joel is still grieving over the loss of his daughter, Sarah, but he is now a smuggler supplying weapons to the Fireflies, which is a rebellious group against the marital law and the military. Now, they're supplying these weapons for ration cards so they can get by with his newly found partner, Tess, who, no, he's not dating, they are strictly business partners, smuggler partners, partners, whatever you want to call it. Now then, this is when we are introduced to Marlene. A firefly asks them for help with a package to smuggle. We are now introduced to little 14 year old Ellie Williams, who is a girl, of course, and she's actually immune to the cordyceps fungal infection. Now they need to get to a hospital on the other side of the country at the Salt Lake Outpost for the fireflies so they can make a cure. Sure enough, shit happened in that time. Tess is bit and unfortunately dies. Joel is impaled by a piece of rebar, nearly dying, when Ellie is there to save him. And not to spoil too much if you haven't played the first game, but Joel does eventually recover and goes to save Ellie at that time when she's been held captive by David in his cannibalistic ways. Ellie then blams David in the head with a machete many a times ultimately killing David but Joel turns up to stop her and give her the little bit of relief that she needs after doing something quite terrible like that. And this is one of the moments where we see Joel actually care about Ellie like she was his own daughter. Now, they continue traveling. They make it to the Salt Lake Outpost ran by Dr. Jerry Anderson, who we don't learn about until the second game, who is the lead surgeon and the only person left in the United States who can make a cure for the fungus. 
Ellie is about to undergo the surgery which will ultimately kill her. If it wasn't for Marlene telling Joel about the procedure, he wouldn't have done what he did. He then entered the hospital, brutally murdered everybody, including the unarmed doctors and also Jerry Anderson. Now, keep in mind, Jerry Anderson, this will play a massive part in the second game. He's then carrying an unconscious Ellie, which is very reminiscent of the start of the game with Sarah, except this time Joel was able to save her. They are driving away into the distance and I'll let the scene play out from there. They've stopped looking for a cure. I'm taking this home. I'm sorry. This brings us on to part two. I'm going to be going into two small sections to begin with and then talk about the storyline afterwards. So let's begin. So to start off with, I'm going to get into the graphics. Now already we can see that Naughty Dog is trying to push the PlayStation 4, the PlayStation 4 Slim and also the PlayStation 4 Pro which is absolute limit with the sheer amount of detail, not just only in the wildlife and vegetation that has consumed Seattle, but the character models and even little things such as dripping water off your clothes or when you come out of a lake, river or even a sewer. The capabilities this opens up for the PlayStation 4 are none like any other, especially considering it is a seven year old console as of the date. But I'm more interested in how they're going to improve upon it with the release of the PlayStation 5 in the holiday season. There's so many small cutscenes that are optional if you are willing to explore a little bit more rather than going to point B, C and so on. One of these scenes personally for me which give off a lot of deep meaning is the Seattle Day One where you're playing as Ellie and you go inside of the music store as a little bit of a side quest where she finds a guitar and tries to play Future Days by Pearl Jam which is the first song that Joel taught her how to play on the guitar. She then proceeds to play Take On Me and I'll just let it play for you guys to watch.
So then, the gameplay. Now, the gameplay hasn't changed drastically between the first and the second game. However, it still works on the same basic concept, but it is a hell of a lot more refined. Whether it be quick time events, or busting through a door, stealth killing clickers, or even the firearms itself, which, uh, believe me, they are loud as fuck, and they will kick like a horse, it gives you that more realistic tone of where let's say people who aren't necessarily trained in firearms it leads into more of like those people if you know what I mean so those who are less experienced with firearms tend to have more kick less stability etc you also have the scarcity of resources which can be changed depending on what difficulty you decide to play on but personally I found alcohol and rags to be some of the hardest items to find in the game compared to finding ammunition for your shotgun or even your long rifle and believe me i died so many times because i didn't have a med kit there on standby to help me but most of the time i'd end up seeing myself running like a fucking roadrunner off looney tunes in circles for about five minutes trying to escape whether that be horde scars or even the wlf and that also leads me on to the next thing you as a player can choose what your response is going to be. Is it going to be fight or is it going to be flight? Because I found myself doing quite a lot of both personally. Let's say fighting against the WLF and the Scars with the occasional clickers, shamblers and that massive twat fucker, the fucking Rat King. I mean, trust me, I fucking shit myself when I saw that. Um, <laughs> but also... Does the game become more linear the closer you are to your goal? Which is getting revenge on Abby. And yeah, it does, but that isn't necessarily a bad thing. Yes, it doesn't give you as many options with the open world aspect as the start of the game, but as you are getting closer to your end goal, you are then as a player more focused on finding Abby and reaching that end goal and now I am gonna repeat myself as I did at the start of the video where there will be spoilers so be warned if you want to play the game for yourself and not know anything about the story then go ahead and click off the video please because I don't want to spoil anything for you also, if you're enjoying the video so far, if you can leave a like and subscribe for more future content on The Last of Us Part 2. I've already played through the game once, but I will be streaming it on our YouTube channel at some point in the future on a second walkthrough of the game. I'm gonna find... and I'm gonna kill... every last one of them. At the start of the game, we see a recap of Joel and Tommy talking about what happened at the end of the first game, with Joel entering the hospital, butchering everyone in sight and retrieving Ellie from the surgery and killing Marlene on the way out to get in a car and head back to Jackson. When we arrive back at Jackson, we drop off our horses and we head into Ellie's ass where these two characters share a moment. Joel sings Future Days and gives Ellie his guitar. We skip forward five years later and we already can tell there's a bit of beef between Ellie and Joel and by that I mean Joel wants to be there for her and look after her in a way that he can but Ellie on the other hand she's being a little bit of a class A cunt. We do find out the reasoning though and believe me it is very good fucking reasoning. Ellie wakes up from a slumber to Jesse, who's a brand new character in the Last of Us series, waking her up because she is yet to go out on patrol with Dina, who's yet again a brand new character. Also, just a little bit of a disclaimer, Dina is Jesse's ex, and yes, Jesse is a bloke. They go out on patrol, and we switch to a brand new cast of characters, and quite frankly, we do not give a flying fuck about these people to begin with. These people are Owen, Mel, Manny, Nora, Jordan, two unnamed characters, and the twat herself, Abby. 
Owen sets out early in the morning and finds Jackson and shows Abby and they refer to what if he's there and at this point we don't know who these people are and what they want but we do know they are looking for someone. Owen turns back after, after telling Abby that she got male pregnant and by that I mean Owen got male pregnant with his baby. So Abby ventures alone into the snow. Sure enough, she's attacked by all the runners and clickers and gets taken down by one. But unfortunately, Joel and Tommy are there to save her. They introduce themselves, and as soon as Joel says who he is, the look on Abby's face is a mix of horror and disbelief. I think she found who she was looking for. They get on an horse and they head to the nearby house where the remainder of the group is. They get inside and welcome Joel and Tommy with open arms until Joel introduces himself yet again. It is at this point Abby turns round and shoots Joel in the knee with a shotgun. Tommy is knocked out and Abby explains herself about why she's doing this. And by explain I mean she fucking implies it. Joel is then beaten repeatedly with a golf club. Meanwhile, Ellie and Dina are off their faces, stone on weed, on patrol having some sexy time when they're caught by Jesse and the reasoning for this is because they are stuck in the middle of a fucking blizzard now then Jesse explains to Dina and Ellie that Joel and Tommy are missing because they did not turn up at their post Ellie then sets out in one direction Dina in another and Jesse in a completely separate direction fortunately Ellie finds a house where Joel is only to walk through the door watching him get beaten to death with a golf club now as soon as she enters that door she gets attacked by these people she slashes Jordan in the face of a switchblade she's then held down to watch Joel unfortunately lose his life and Joel is a man who has cared for her loved her and treated her like he was his own daughter so then the WLF or this group also known as the Washington Liberation Front leave the house and head off back to Seattle this is when Ellie and Joel are found by Dina and Jesse and they are helped back to Jackson unfortunately we do skip to a cutscene of where Ellie is sat next to Joel's grave Reminiscing on the past, on what she could have done better. So then, Ellie, at this point she vows for revenge when Tommy won't go. Just to learn, the day after, that Tommy has got his heart set. And he's already left to go to Seattle to go and kill these fuckers. Maria is worried, who, in case you don't know, that is Tommy's wife. And she sends Ellie and Dina off to go and retrieve Tommy and bring him back safe or in our words in one fucking piece so then they get to Seattle they have to climb over a gate and they get in only to shortly after be on a wild goose chase full of dead people and they are chased into a underground sewer and it all just goes to shit from there they get captured by the WLF, and more specifically, Jordan. Ellie is about to be killed when Dina shows up, shooting through the glass, only to rescue Dina after she's been strangled to death by Jordan. At this point, they make their way out, and they decide to carry on tracking Abby instead. After they get out from the underground, they rest in the theatre, and all of a sudden we learn that Dina is pregnant with Jesse's baby. So then, day two in Seattle. Dina finds the whereabouts of Abby at a hospital over the radio. Along the way, Ellie is attacked by another faction called the Seraphites, otherwise known as Scars. Ellie kills them, run for the, runs for the hospital to not find Abby, but Nora instead. Chasing her throughout the hospital, throwing her into spores to finally give up Abby's location after beating Nora to death with a pipe. Fucking hell, Ellie, you need to fucking calm it.
So then, she is back to be chased down by WLF again to run into Jesse, who basically saves her life. The rest up as Ellie is injured at this point and decides to head over to the aquarium where she believes Abby is hiding. Ellie and Jesse split off their separate ways as he goes to look for Tommy and she looks for Abby. But she doesn't run into Abby, but instead Owen and a now heavily pregnant Mel. Ellie offers them both to live, granted they give up Abby's location, only for Owen to attack Ellie and shoot him in the stomach. Mel attacks Ellie and also afterwards loses a fight as Mel and her baby are now dead after Mel was stabbed in the neck. At this point, Ellie doesn't know that Mel was pregnant. After being told by Owen in his last dying breath, Ellie checks her stomach to see Mel and a pregnant and a child to suddenly be overcome by sickness, nausea and regret as she's just killed a woman and her baby. And fucking hell, this franchise does not hold back when it comes to killing children. First we had Sarah and then Riley and now we have a brand new fucking baby that's still in the womb. So then, Tommy and Jesse, they turn up and they head back to the theatre. Only to be shortly attacked the next day by Abby and Lev. Jesse is shot dead straight through the eye. So then, that is another father who's been killed in this game already. Pretty sure we're on three now. <sighs> and we end off with a solid cliffhanger with a gun pointed directly at Ellie. And flashback to him. Also, I know I haven't mentioned any of the flashbacks to Ellie's story, so here's a quick rundown. Ellie sees dinosaurs and plays astronauts on her birthday. She goes shooting with Tommy and a tap wire blows with Joel. And then she learns the truth about the fireflies and the cure. And that is the reasoning why she was pissed off at Joel all this time. So then, back to the flashback. Again, we are now playing as Abby. And my personal reaction to this, I... I wasn't very happy about it. I was pissed. But we are now in the final moment of the first game where Joel brings Ellie to the Salt Lake Outpost in Utah at the hospital where Abby's father, Dr. Jerry Anderson, is the last man able to make a cure for the infection. She finds him off wandering in the woods alone looking for a zebra. Only to find that zebra caught in barbed wire. Owen comes along to tell them that the girl is here, you know, the one that's immune, the one that keeps that Marlene keeps on talking about. So they get to the hospital. Marlene wants to do it another way so that Ellie can still live, but the only option is if she unfortunately passes away. They start the surgery. You know that doctor who helped the scalpel to you in the first game? Yeah, that's Jerry. In other words, Jerry's dead and that is four on the father kill counter. This sums up the main question as to why Abby killed Joel. Present day, Abby is told by Isaac, the leader of the Washington Liberation Front. She and Manny are going to be the first to attack Scar Island, which is where all the Seraphites are. But Owen is missing and is presumed to have killed a WLF member, also known as Danny, to save a scar. Abby goes on the hunt for Owen to only find him at the aquarium. But this is after she's captured by scars, only to then meet Yara and Lev. Now, Lev is a young transgender boy who isn't accepted by the Scars because of their god-like fucking religion because they are sincerely fucked up. Yara has her arm beaten to bits with a hammer. So then, Lev saves Yara and they decide to save Abby and they head to the aquarium. Yara's arm is infected and if it isn't amputated, she will die. So Abby and Lev Head off to get some surgical equipment from the hospital. 
I wanted to be arrested by the WLF because she deserted to go and find Owen. Nora Freezer. Abby gets the equipment she needs, only to be attacked by this big fucking shit and fungus. Also known as Rat King. Believe me, I fucking shit myself when I saw that. I didn't know what to do. She escapes. Yara gets her arms sorted and Lev decides to desert and go to speak to his mother on Sky Island. But Lev is trans, as I've just mentioned, and it won't go down well with his mother. She will try and kill him. In the meantime, Abby goes looking for Lev to stumble across Manny, and they are both now pinned down by a sniper. This sniper is no other than Tommy. They chase Tommy, Manny gets shot in the head, and he dies. And it was justified because I personally don't like Manny, he's a bit of a dickhead. Abby goes to Scar Island with Yara to save Lev. Isaac turns up and shoots Yara. And then Yara kills Isaac and Lev. And Abby escape off the island and head back to the aquarium. <sighs> they reach the aquarium only to find a dead Alice, which is the poor dog. To see a dead male and a deceased Owen. And also a map. A map. That Elliot dropped in the final moments of that scene after killing Owen and Mel. Now, this map also gives Abby and Lev the location of where they are inside of the theatre because they're fucking idiots and they decided to mark it down. Abby and Lev go there, and the same plays out before. Ellie and Jesse come bursting through the door, Jesse gets shot and killed. Just as Abby is about to shoot Ellie, Tommy brings up his last little bit of strength and pushes the gun away, only to be shot in the leg with an arrow from Lev, and then shot in the head by Abby shortly after. Abby chases down Ellie to give her a beat down, hoping to kill her because Ellie and Tommy killed all of her friends. Ellie is then saved by Dina, who, bear in mind, is pregnant. And Abby has no resent to wanting to kill Dina by nearly slitting her throat. Even after being told that she's pregnant, she simply replies with, Good. Which, personally, for me, is fucking disgusting. I'll tell you something. Naughty Dog, you've got balls with this game. You've got some serious balls. So then, nine months later, Dina and Ellie are back in the farmhouse with their brand new baby boy, JJ, only to have Tommy turn up out of nowhere. Yes, he's alive. Unfortunately, he can no longer walk properly and he's blind in the one eye. Now he explains to Ellie that he has a location on Abbey in Santa Barbara, but says that he can't do it because of his injuries at this point Maria has left him and he's got nothing else to live for so after losing everything Ellie decides to take the trip to Santa Barbara to go and kill Abby once and for all this is when we switch back to Abby for one final time Abby and Lev are now at a place in Santa Barbara on a street called Constance where they need to find the house 2425. This is when they find a radio and speak to a potential firefly only to leave the house shortly after and be attacked by a new gang called the Rattlers who knock out Lev, beat Abby with a baseball bat and take them to a prison camp. So our last final switch. We are switching back to Ellie now. Ellie locates her in Santa Barbara after losing everything, as I've just mentioned. However, shortly after going through a house of infected, she's caught on a trap and strung up in the air, only to be stabbed by a tree branch, leaving her to slowly bleed out. And those people who beat the living shit out of Abby and knocked out Lev 
Come and find Ellie, strung up. They help Ellie down. All Ellie has to do is simply laugh at them, take the piss for one of them to get angry. She musters the strength and throws the one rattler into a clicker, only for him to be eaten. Grabs his submachine gun, shoots the other rattler in the legs, only to get information out of him, and then kill him mercilessly shortly after. Ellie then makes away through the Rattler's camp, killing everyone in sight, killing all infected, saving a bunch of prisoners, only to be told that Abby is down on the pier, on the beachfront, strung up to a pillar, where she's left to die after she tries to escape. Ellie makes her way down to the pillars, cuts Abby off, and she's about to let them go until she has a flashback of Joel and then decides to pull out her switchblade on an unconscious Lev threatening to kill him if Abby didn't fight her. At this point they fight, Ellie gets the upper hand only to shortly after have Abby bite her fingers off and remember this as we're coming to the end. She then no longer has a flashback of a Joel who is bloody and beaten but she has a flashback of him sitting on his front porch strumming away on his guitar being happy and loving and carefree of the world Ellie then decides to let them go she sat in the water crying and then we cut back to the farmhouse we walk inside and it is empty there's no JJ there's no Tommy there's no Dina there's no furniture out there is no nothing there Ellie heads upstairs sees a guitar and tries to play Future Days which is if you remember the first song that Joel taught her how to play on the guitar only this time unable to play the song not because it is a unhappy reminder of Joel it is because she's lost a pinky finger and a ring finger and can't play the guitar anymore which is the last thing she had to remember Joel by we then see her carefully playing the guitar on the wall next to the window which is a symbolism of finally putting Joel to rest leaving him behind once and for good at this point she's at the fifth stage of grief which is acceptance we see her walking off into the woods alone not knowing what is going to happen next and thank you if you have made it to the end of the video I know I dragged on there for the storyline part but I am absolutely fucking knackered and I've got a college call in exactly two minutes so yeah I'm gonna need to end this up very quickly and also if you're wondering I'm having to do this in completely one take Otherwise my computer would have a meltdown, it would crash, it would break, and then I would need to run it over with a 12 ton lorry. But if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a comment, like, and subscribe to our channel for, uh, for future content. I can't even fucking speak anymore. Sometime this week or next week, I will put out a post on Twitter. So keep an eye out for our Twitter. It will be linked in the description and in the top right of this video I will display the username for you guys and I will be streaming my second playthrough of The Last of Us Part 2 and I will really slow down and try and take in as much as I can about the game try and get it all completed and I'll even go for platinum on there whilst I'm on stream so 
thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next video which is due for fuck knows when the live stream there you go if i ever were to lose you i'd surely lose myself Trying sometimes you'll succeed to make this man of me. All my stolen missing parts, I've no need for anymore. As I believe, and I believe, as I can see. Days of you and me